as they say, you know, ask a, a brick what it wants to be and it'll say an arch. But you ask a mason what he wants to build and he'll say an arch. I was really just blown away by how such an old technology it was still functioning. It lasts. We know that when people talk about a 50-year building, to us, that's really nothing. There are many great Guastavino buildings all over the country. In whatever city you're in, you can almost certainly find a significant building with Guastavino vaulting. It shows the level of sophistication. It's an art that goes back beyond my time. I've probably looked at these types of ceilings before and just looked at them. Many architects and engineers today marvel at the construction of Guastavino vaults, but few really understand how they were put together. We wanted to demonstrate the technology of the vault by recreating a vault to show the stages of construction, the layering of the tiles, and how they were able to create such remarkable patterns. What we're really doing is just making a half-scale model. We have to balance all the forces so it doesn't burst, doesn't fall over. This is accomplished by using steel columns, steel ties. The true master builders who built this building didn't have any formwork, any guides for the vaults. We start four edges by making arches. I've worked on many, many arches. Arches, no problem. From those arches, we start laying tile in a vault shape. So the real magic starts once we start using Plaster of Paris. The Plaster of Paris dries fast enough that you can butter up the sides of the tiles, hold it there, and 20, 30 seconds, it'll stay. I saw them pulling out a bunch of different tools just trying to get the geometry right, but it's kind of surprising to know that years prior it was only done by eye and nothing else really. The first layer is really what makes this Guastavino vault possible. But rather than close it in in the middle, we've left it open and we've peeled back the different layers to try to demonstrate the construction technique made of thin tiles only about one inch thick with layers of mortar in between. It works in like a whole network. Generally the last step would be attaching visible tiles on the bottom. And these are usually more ornate. The bottom right now is the toughest part with the tile from underneath. Flat tiles in a geometric pattern on a doubly curved surface from below. I mean, we've just taken this to the PhD level of masonry. We had carefully drawn three-dimensional drawings of the vault. But then when you build it in reality, there are always adjustments that had to be made. So there was a lot of learning that occurred between the Masons and the architecture and engineering students. If somebody tells you something should be 7 to 5 eighths, uh, as an engineer, you take it to the bank, it's gonna be 7.625. But as a Mason, we know that that's just what it was designed to be, but truly what it is is different. And so we viewed this as a great opportunity to bring together professional Masons and craftsmen with architects and engineers trying to better understand how these are built and trying to create new vaults for the future. I've always asked the question, why don't you use these anymore? Just lack of people know how to do it and lack of awareness. Teaching our young architects and teaching our engineers, we're desperately trying to get back to masonry. The Guastavino Company was one of the greatest possibilities for creating beautiful, durable structures. And we are mere mortals trying to recreate what he did. <laughs>